Right, here we are back with the Spitfire. Um, as I said last time, I was going to uh, mask the canopy, uh, give it a coat of uh, primer, and check for any areas that needed uh, work on them. I've done that. Uh, coat of primer has been applied, lightly sanded back. You can see how smooth that, uh, that finish is there. And I've also um, started off, I've given the underside a coat of uh, Sky. Now I'm using um, Mr. Colours. Uh, for this, so uh, that is Mr. Color 30, sorry, 368 Sky. Um, I've basically given the model a, a, just a, a good coat of that. Um, the thing with Mr. Color paints is uh, the pigment in these is really, really dense. So this was really quite a f heavily thinned coat, and it took uh, four or five minutes to completely paint this underside with a good, um, a good opaque coat. Now what I want to do now is I want to uh, give it a slightly uh, patchy sort of appearance um, and one of the traditional ways of doing that is with uh, pre-shading which involves putting a, uh, a dark colour down before you apply this main colour, um, you know, dark, dark grey or black and then that shows through the, um, that shows through the base coat. I've never been a huge fan of that. Anybody who knows me will uh, will be well aware. I I do use pre-shading from time to time, but it's not something that is a part of my regular armory. I, I don't think it. I don't find it very controllable, um, and I it, it, quite often it just looks it just it just doesn't look right to me. But but what I do is I I, I use a post shading method that I picked up um, a few years ago from one of the um, forums, I think it was probably a guy on uh, the Aircraft Resource Centre forums and he achieves a kind of a, a variegated patchy pattern in quite a subtle way and the way he does it is with um, kind of random cloud patterns so I've got my airbrush, got my uh, I'm just going to turn the pressure down on the the valve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a mixture of the sky and uh, with 316 which is uh, basically insignia white. So I'm going to add this is Mr. Colour Leveling Thinner by the way um, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brush and I'm going to add one brushful of the sky and then I'm going to add one brushful of the insignia white in fact I'm going to add another little dab of insignia white. So that's given me a sky which is um, very very pale in colour and it's also thinned about 60 or 70 percent. Now how I do this there's nothing um, let's turn the pressure up a little bit there's nothing complex about this, it's simply a case of picking a panel on the aircraft, in this case I'm going to use a tailplane and going one way across it and then going the other way and it's really that simple now you might think that would give you a kind of a, a checkered or uh, you know a, a blocky checkered effect but for some reason if the paint's thin enough and you go careful enough all it does is imparts a really cloudy vague pattern over your base colour and it's simply like that and it's moving across the whole model. Now, probably 
you can barely see that. It's a bit more visible in real life, um, but... That kind of vague, barely visible effect is more or less what I'm exactly what I'm after. Um, you don't want it to be too stark. A lot of uh, time people pre-shade and it's very, very stark. Um, an old trick with this kind of job is to keep it supple. Like I say, pick panels, work one way over the panel, and then go 90 degrees over those same panels. And like I say, well, whilst you would think that would impart a kind of checkerboard effect, it actually doesn't. It um, gives a really, really nice effect. So this is just working over panels as we go. I'm going to try and ignore the gun blisters on the underside here so that they they kind of pop out a little bit. So then we'll go right along the leading edge of the wing here. And then, like I say, really simple, 90 degrees. And go over those panels again. So I don't know if you can, it's probably picking it up a little bit, but um, as I say, as you move them on the round in the light, it becomes far more uh, obvious to the naked eye than it will on film, I suspect. It's just amazing, you know, being sure that you uh, cover everything you need to cover with it. Um, make sure you go to the edge of panel lines, otherwise you'll end up with something that will look quite like pre-shading if you're not careful, where you've missed it, taking it right up to the edge of um, right up to the edge of panel. So whilst you are doing it panel by panel, if you like. You are doing the whole panel, not just the. Uh, you're doing the whole panel, not just the middle of the panel. And some people say, well, why are you doing it panel by panel if you're just going for a, an overall variegated effect? Why don't you just do the whole surface of the model in one go? 
Well, doing it by panel by panel, even though you're covering the whole panel and, and not leaving the edges uncovered or anything like that, it still sort of contributes to the overall effect, I find. Because you're still looking like you're doing individual pieces of weathering. Okay, so that's all those done. And again, we'll turn back and we'll go. And then we're going at 90 degrees again. As you can see, but that is, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that that's more or less done now. Um, it's just a very initial stage of uh, weathering. So I've got the um, the ventral tank here. So I'll do that as well. Same with the uh, the undercarriage doors here. Just keeping it uh, as uniform as I can over the entire uh, surface it's being painted. And it's really as simple as that. So the other beauty of uh, Mr. Colour is as you can see that was painted what two minutes ago and it's touch dry now. So with that done The other secret weapon that I like to uh, uh, employ, which a lot of people kind of miss, is that when you're using these kind of post shading effects, quite often they can look uh, quite stark. So let's just give my airbrush a quick, quick clean out. Okay. And then I'll put another bit of Mr. Colour Leveling Thinner in my brush and then a brush full of the original Sky. So this is the base colour Sky. Really heavily thinned, it's probably 60, 70, maybe up to 80% uh, thinners. So the point here is misting some of the base colour over in a kind of very heavily thinned misty coat and what that does is that just tones back any sort of um, tendency for your weathering to look too stark or patchy or anything like that so pulling the brush right open there and misting that over and that that is how I apply basic colours so uh, really quite simple and uh, like I say uh, that that will dry you if you you really got to catch catch the paint in the light to see 
the effect it's had, but it, um, like I say, it just, it just breaks up the monotone uh, uh, look of the of the base colour quite nicely, without doing too much to shift the actual colour. If you know what I mean, you're not you haven't changed the base colour. It's still very definitely. Uh, it's still very definitely RAF Sky, but it's just got a bit of a patchy sort of. Uh, it's just got a bit of a patchy appearance to it now. Um, so what's going to happen next is I'm going to mask off and uh, spray the top sides in, uh, and that will be uh, Mr. Color Three Six Nine Dark Earth. And the same thing will happen. I'll lighten it with uh, some sort of pale stone or light yellow colours and I'll do the same um, job over the top side before we go to mask for the camouflage scheme. So I'll show you that um, hopefully next time uh, I see you um, that'll be painted and I can show you the top side and it might um, the actual effect might stand out a bit more on the dark earth than it has on the very pale underside of the Spitfire here. So um, I'll see you then and uh, we can progress with painting of the top sides.